Art in general embodies what's important to a culture at a given time. So it's a, a history of what mattered and what matters to us as a culture and preserving it helps future generations appreciate our history and know where we came from. This is pretty much my life. I started when I was a kid and uh, I was very impressed with people that were rebuilding things in Poland that were destroyed during the war. To a kid, to see something that didn't exist or was completely fallen, look back again the way it was originally, this was amazing. And that actually stayed with me. When I was a bit older, I went to a conservation high school people teaching me were actually those people that were rebuilding Poland. So I've learned from really good experts. Weather in Chicago is pretty much extremely destructive. We've got very hot summers, extremely cold winters, a lot of freezing tow cycles. So deterioration in our climate happens as quickly as it would in the south of the US in terms of heat caused degradation and as bad as it would be in Alaska during winter. So we have both, which is not exactly the best for the sculptures and monuments. The system that I invented called the GC1 is the result of about 15 years of frustration with other technology. And eventually I decided, well, I'm just gonna try to build one. And the first laser I built outperformed anything we'd seen to date and did incredibly well. And immediately filed patents on it, so it kind of naturally evolved out of necessity. The Nickerson Mansion was a landmark project. Uh, now it's obviously the Driehaus Museum. This was the first time an entire building from top to bottom was laser clean. Uh, it really opened up the eyes of the world as to how laser cleaning can be used on a larger scale, and that was because my father took a risk back then and invested in laser technology, and it paid off. So, the plasma is actually the fourth state of matter. So you have solid, liquid, gas, plasma. That's basically uh, all the electrons being excited in an excited state. So unlike a James Bond laser, we're not burning through things. We're uh, just exciting those molecules to break up so the material vaporizes off the surface. One thing with the laser is we can control how much we remove and how much we clean. We don't have to clean something to make it look 100% new. Some sculptures, corrosion is considered unacceptable and against the artist's intent and it needs to be brought back to an original condition. Other sculptures, the corrosion is considered part of the history and the artist's intent. So I'm going to change the settings really quick and you'll see a difference in a second. So we have really precise control over how much we remove and what we leave behind. It does sometimes feel like a Photoshop airbrush in reverse, like the eraser. People ask, well, how long do you sit laser cleaning for? You know, I mean, normally I say take a break every two hours, but myself and my father, like, we get into kind of a laser trance because it's so satisfying. It's instant gratification. I mean, I could sit there for like 10 hours straight and just keep doing something. What we can do with lasers what was physically impossible before. We started working on projects in Chicago and then I, uh, we were getting calls from pretty much almost everywhere. We are now traveling pretty much all over the world to work on projects. We work for cities, uh, museums, for the U.S. government, state governments. most impressive, in my opinion, was removing graffiti from Hueco tanks, from prehistoric pictographs using lasers. I moved to Chicago and the rest is pretty much history. I worked here since 1991 until now and I don't plan ever to move. No one in Chicago can give you a tour of downtown like the Dynowski family. 
So we've worked on so many things and know so many backstories and behind the scenes things that pretty much everywhere we look, we've contributed somehow. So it's very rewarding.